I do, I will present Steve Brogan. Okay. So Zach, we're gonna have somebody. Oh. to be with you. Uh, this is, uh, I think, the five, fifth year in a row that ISU, which essentially is uh, a kissing cousin of uh, SEDS, as many of you know, uh, perhaps, but perhaps not everyone, the founders of SEDS are the very same three idealists who created the International Space University, uh, also created the Space Gen uh, organization for young professionals who finished their college, uh, and that body, that third body, uh, has an advisory seat with the UN. So this grand vision that uh, Peter Diamandis, Bob Richards, and Todd Hawley had, uh, along with uh, their, their mentor, Sir Arthur C. Clarke, to create not only at the undergraduate level with SEDS, but at the graduate level with ISU as a graduate school, and then as a pro at the professional level uh, with uh, people in their early 20s and into their 30s, to have a real voice and a, way, a real way to influence the uh, direction of the endeavor, the global endeavor of uh, space exploration and development. And uh, as they struggle to get the slides going, uh, that's basically the, uh, the, the framework. Uh, I, what I do, what I thought I'd do is just give a few charts. I'm going to go over uh, through them very quickly. I just pick out a few things that, that I think might be relevant. Um, just, just so you know, I, I spent a career at NASA. I uh, worked on, uh, I was at the first launch of the shuttle back in um, 81. In fact, I had actually gotten into Columbia uh, with John Young and Bob Crippen before the launch and uh, had that experience and had the experience of being there for the first launch. And uh, uh, it was delayed actually two days because of a, uh, uh, a glitch in the, in the, in the uh, computers. And um, the newspaper down in Florida the next day had this picture of everybody waiting for NASA to decide when that first launch would take place. And front and center on this picture was myself and one of my colleagues from the company I was working for, sacked out on a, on a towel. You know, we'd been there all night long waiting for the launch. And I sent the picture to uh, Bob Crippen, who I'd gotten to work with on the shuttle. And he sent it back with him and John Young saying, thanks for your great support, Steve, on STS-1, with me sprawled out asleep at the, at the picture. Uh, I had a fantastic time working at NASA for 20 years. Uh, feel free to grab me later if you want to hear about it. I worked on Lunar Prospector, Deep Impact, Genesis, Sophia. I was a NASA space station representative in the Netherlands for four years and, um, and uh, worked on strategic planning, use of in-situ in resources, etc. So, uh, do I have a device or am I just going to say next slide? Okay, well, can I ask you to go to the next slide? Great. So, ISU was founded uh, on MIT's campus at a founding conference, April 12th, 1987. This 25th anniversary is being celebrated this year. And uh, the first chancellor was Sir Arthur C. Clarke, famous from uh, 2001, A Space Odyssey, but uh, a visionary and uh, author of, of great fame. And, uh, forward moves, okay. And the, uh, the words that really struck me from the credo that the three young founders, uh, Diamandis, uh, Holly, and uh, Bob Richards put together really spoke to me. The importance of the interdisciplinary studies for the successful exploration and development of space and a place where diversity of culture, philosophy, lifestyle, training, and opinion are honored and nurtured. It was a, a present vision for a place, an institution that would bring people from all over the world together. So what is ISU today? Well, it's a, a diverse collection of uh, students from around the world who come at the graduate level to seek a master's degree or a certificated summer program or one of the other programs taught by an international body from around the world. 
Uh, at campus, we have a campus in Strasbourg, France. That's a, the headquarters, the main campus. But we have some programs that also move like the Olympic Games each summer to a different campus and a different country around the globe. Uh, this is just a, um, not, not to have anybody read any word slides, but I just put up a list of a sample of some of the faculty involved in ISU. People like um, Jeff Hoffman, four, five time space shuttle flyer, who's a professor now at MIT. He's a faculty member for ISU. Uh, individuals like John Loxton, who uh, advises uh, presidents on, on space transition matters, who's, uh, who's a specialist in uh, both history and, and uh, policy related to space. Uh, we have, uh, Individuals from all different walks of life, all different disciplines, from law to economics to science and engineering. And the key thing is they have their day jobs. They are pushing forward the state of the art in their fields. And they come to ISU and teach students for several days or a week or a month. And uh, as the uh, resident faculty in Strasbourg, France, the small core, which are like department heads, bring people in at different times and make sure that each year the information that's conveyed is coming from individuals who are out in the field doing the state-of-the-art work, so it keeps it fresh. The ISU community now is over 3,500 strong. We have alumni from over 100 countries. You'll see uh, in red all the countries from which alumni have come, and uh, we're working on finding individuals to come from those few places around the globe where there's not yet a representative. Um, but 85% from our statistics remain in the space program, so it's a passionate group of people who not only come and edu get educated, but also commit themselves primarily to, to work in the space field, both on the private side, public side, um, nonprofit, academia, whatever. And one third of recent graduates have been women, uh, and uh, in particular, the U.S. Uh, applicant pool to ISU has produced parity and sometimes beyond parity. We've, we've, we've achieved uh, in 2012, I believe, was it say there's 61% of the U.S. alumni that graduated last in, in this last set of classes were uh, were women, uh, leading the pack uh, of the world. You know, other countries have a long ways to go to get to where the American is and embracing women in, in all that we do. Um, I, I won't, uh, again, this is um, an eye chart for those who like to look at names and pick people out who are alumni of the university. You have a number, in fact, let me, could I see a show of hands? Uh, there's a few ISU alum in the crowd, if they would raise their hands. And if you look around and see who those are, if you have any specific questions about what's this ISU like, go talk to them. I noticed, the, is that Will there who raised his hand for Pomerantz? No. Oh, Nick. Okay. Oh, there's Will over there. <laughs> my, uh, my vision isn't that good at that distance. Will from uh, Virgin Galactic will be speaking to you later during the conference, and he's one of our alums. But just a recollection I had. When I first joined, uh, after retiring from NASA, I first taught, joined ISU and took a two-week program at the mid-executive level that ISU does, and it was in Beijing, China, when we had our summer session for nine weeks in Beijing. And one of my favorite memories about what the network means amongst the 3,500 alums and those associated with the ISU family is the 12 of us that were in this executive force. There were three NASA people, three NASA executives. There were three Chinese space officials. There was myself. We had a couple entrepreneurs that had companies active in space. We had a fellow that worked in technology transfer for the German government with Russia and China. Uh, somebody from Canada, somebody from France. And we were uh, on a professional visit to the Long March, China Long March rocket plant that builds, and it's an equivalent of Boeing and Lockheed wrapped up into one, they built a Long March rocket. And the senior board of the company addressed our 12 people, and as we were ushered into this very posh boardroom of the Long March company, I was seated across from the president of the company, and I looked at his lapel, and he had an ISU alumni pin. And that was the president of Long March uh, China. And he looked across the room and he said, I'm an ISU alum, you can ask me any question you want. And our group got access, not only the 12 of us, but the whole 120 or so students of that summer program 
We've had access to facilities, astronaut facilities, and others around Beijing related to the space program that the head of NASA, Mike Griffin, at that time wasn't even given access to, mainly because we had uh, ISU alums as senior members of the space program within the Chinese government and industry. So ISU has this mantra of its three eyes, interdisciplinary, international, intercultural. That's what makes ISU uh, the niche that ISU occupies, a graduate school with inter interdisciplinary space education. And when I say interdisciplinary, I mean from engineering to law and economics and everything in between. It's not just amongst the science and engineering. We embrace and seek people from the humanities, from psychology, from languages, from history. <clears throat> all to uh, embrace and help people see from different points of view. Major programs. I've mentioned the summer program, that's a flagship. It's been around since, since the dawn of ISU, so to speak, and it moves around the world every summer. Uh, we we uh, offer two masters of science degrees, one in space studies and one in space management. It's more focused on management and policy. That's a 12-month intensive program, nine months on, on campus in Strasbourg, France, with a three-month internship facilitated by the network of alums that we have that could be anywhere in the world. Uh, we also have an executive MBA program for people further along in their careers who do not have the time to do a full, full-time uh, program in MBA, but want to just be away from work for two weeks at a time over a 18-month uh, period nine weeks total away from the workplace over 18 months and it's the only one uh the only mba as we know that has space as its focus uses space as the case studies uh and we had a very nice write-up in the wall street journal for those who like to read what they say about it. all these programs embrace this three eyes of methodology interdisciplinary international and cultural and they all the uh two main programs is the masters of space Stuff the Master of Science as well as the SSP, this space studies program, space that occurs in the summer, embrace team projects over topical issues in the space field. People come together across country lines, across cultures, across disciplines, and tackle a problem that may be of great interest to NASA, to the Japanese Space Agency, to uh, EADS in Europe, to uh, Boeing in the U.S. Well, we had a one team project uh, that the World Bank sponsored because it was dealing with uh, disaster uh, predictions in Central America. So all different organizations get to uh, uh, show some interest in these team projects that the students work on in these programs. So the SSP has been all over the globe, uh, every continent except for uh, Africa and Antarctic. And we're working on South Africa. There has to be a host that's come, competed, and an RFP is put out, and a selection is made of where to go. Uh, and uh, the map didn't show, didn't have these, the ones at the bottom listed, but in 2009, we were hosted by NASA Ames in, in Silicon Valley. Uh, in, uh, two, in, and then we came back to the States in 2012, this last summer, in a very successful hosting by Bob Cabana's folks at the Kennedy Space Center, along with Florida Tech, and uh, 135 students from about 25, 30 countries uh, of all different age ranges who came to those. This is a typical demographic. This is from the Space Studies program. Uh, which year is that? 2000, I can't read it from here. 2010. Uh, the mixture of disciplines is in the upper left pie. Uh, about one half from the engineering field, but then everything else from policy, policy and law, um, biology, the humanities, physics, astronomy, all different disciplines represented. Uh, 121 participants from 29 countries, average age, I think it says 28 or so. But the, uh, the average range is uh, we have people that come right out of right out of a bachelor's degree and others who come uh, after they've had careers in other fields so we, we have individuals that come participate in that program in their 40s 50s sometimes even their 60s uh, another chart so the master's program has similar demographics 
Some people, about a third, come without any additional experience beyond the bachelor's degree. Two thirds come with either work experience or a higher level degree, some with a PhD level, or a medical degree, or architecture, law degrees, etc. Team projects, again, a list of, of projects, everything from point to point suborbital flight to uh, viability of new spaceports. Uh, disaster risk management, that's one that was done from the World Bank. Uh, looking at caves on Mars as potential habitats for humans. And uh, volcano prediction, all kinds of different uh, applications. Uh, some more projects. All of these, uh, we seek support and sponsorship. Very often get sponsorship from places like NASA and other organizations. Boeing has supported us for the team project. And students who then become alum and graduate uh, very often, very regularly give presentations on their team projects at the American Astronomical Congress that meets around the world each year and at uh, NASA or the European Space Agency or we did one at the NOAA uh, here in the States which, had, which was dealing with the issue of piracy, piracy on, on, on the high seas, fishing piracy and the students had formulated an algorithm to search and identify ships who were following a, a protocol which would identify them as pirates and uh, fishing where they should be fishing for, for uh, fish that they should have been fishing. And uh, that was presented to the state of their students from that team project, presented that to the Coast Guard, NOAA, State Department, Pew Trust, and other people who are interested in the results of that study. Uh, ISU is supported by all the space agencies. In fact, our board of trustees is, is something you, is hard to hold. It's got all the space agencies on it, most of the major aerospace companies, a number of uh, key individuals, the Heinlein Trust uh, supports us, the uh, Arthur C. Clarke Foundation, and the So here's a picture of the campus building, the main, main building in Strasbourg, France. We have a high bay, and in it we have an Excalibur Almaz capsule, which the, the company partnered with the Russian entity has this photo reconnaissance capsule that is now being marketed for private travel into space. And they put a uh, capsule on loan at ISU for students to do human factor studies on it. Next chart, please. There we go. Uh, we have a number of uh, uh, research facilities that have been uh, generously donated by NASA, by ESA, by Inmarsat, a few others. We have an active ground tracking station, a concurrent design facility, a radio telescope that even out that outside astronomers has for time and occasionally, and other research tools are being accumulated as we go. And some future time, one of the goals of the founders was to have phase one, which was the vagabond mode. They had offices at MIT, but no central campus. Phase two, central campus has been achieved. Phase three is a facility wherever humans uh, establish a permanent presence. So someday we may have a satellite campus in orbit. We've already granted the, the first uh, degree, an honorary doctorate to Anusha Ansari while she was on orbit. So that was the first degree granted in space. And uh, if we have a colony on the moon someday, I expect there'll be uh, an ISU presence there as well. So uh, I'll just leave you that. Uh, one of the one of the phrases often used is that ISU is a gold standard in interdisciplinary space education. That's the niche. Interdisciplinary space education, what makes it the gold standard is this international intercultural uh, model of education, bringing people together all different walks of life with all different backgrounds and perspectives, who have a passion for space, a passion to help humanity, and a passion to move humanity off this planet, as well as to, to embrace and uh, improve our, our life, livelihood here on the Earth. So that's the end of my, of, uh, my little sales pitch, and uh, you've earned your lunch by having to listen to me now. Uh, but also have the great pleasure. This came about a couple of years ago when I was speaking to students from one of your chapters. They had just won the SEDS Project Award, and the uh, project was building sort of launch vehicles and uh, or, or a sounding rocket project 
They did that on our campus. And afterwards, I was talking to the students, and I said, um, well, you, you needed to raise some money for this project, correct? And he said, yes. I said, did you put together a business plan, use some students from the business school, get them involved, uh, and, and help fundraise? And he said, no, that would have been a good idea. And I said, well, did you do some PR around the campus? Did you use any of the students from the communications department or from the arts or from marketing? No, that would have been a good idea. And it, it struck me right at that moment. ISU is so committed in its, in its credo, as is said in its foundation, for space embracing all, all interests and all disciplines. So uh, from that day, I decided I would create two awards. I, in partnership with the American Astronomical Society, we created a $250 award to the SEDS chapter that has the highest percentage of diversity of majors represented within that chapter. Not only people of the aerospace field, of, of aerospace engineering, of physics, but we have people from the business school, from the communications field, or other things. And I have that award to present today. And similar uh, in, a, in a sense of diversity in bringing more women into the field. Uh, we are doing a great job in the States. It's not as well. It's coming along elsewhere in the world, but we're partnering between ISU and women in aerospace. We're creating a chapter award for the chapter, the SETS chapter, the highest has the highest percentage of women, the gender diversity. So, if we have a representative, I will first present this award. This is the certificate here. The, uh, the check that comes will be in the mail, but I need to have, know how to make it out payable, so uh, that will come in a week or so. The International Space University and the American Astronomical Society present the 2012 ISU AAS Prize for Multidisciplinary Participation to the SEDS Chapter of the University of North Carolina. Present the 2012 ISU We Have Prize for Participation of Women to the SEDS Chapter of the University of North Dakota, the Dakota Space Society. Is there a representative from If not, I will transmit to them the appropriate time. Well, thank you for your attention, and I look forward to enjoying what you've already done. 